As the scene shifted to Chicago, the two teams performed before the most boisterous fans in hockey. The intensity of the crowd was only exceeded by the physicality of the play as both sides went at each other with all they had. The Flames hung tough in Game 3, finally taking charge in the third period and route to a 5-2 win. Mike Vernon, and now with 10 seconds remaining, it's flipped down the ice into the Chicago zone. And again, Chevrier mishandled that puck as it goes back to the net. And with Yanni and Poplinski pushing and shoving, the siren sounds to end the hockey game at Chicago Stadium with the Calgary Flames taking a 2-1 lead in games. And now we have Manson attempting to go after Poplinski. I don't think I've ever seen that before. The referee, Bill McCurry, ripped the stick out of Manson's hands and threw it in the net. And although the game's over, the fun it hasn't stopped. Hunter and Dirk Graham. Here comes Manson. He's got his stick back. Larmer's in there as well. And over in front of the Chicago bench, Poplinski and Savard get going. Or is it? It's Otto. Sorry, Joel Otto. And out comes Chevrier. This could develop into a real nasty scene. Chevrier's got Otto pinned against the Hawk bench. Mike Keenan's trying to get his players away from him because he knows the trouble he'd get in if anybody on the bench got involved. And back in the slot are four players wrestling. Dirk Graham and Tim Hunter are the two that were down on the ice. So far, no punches have been thrown, but it was Savard who was involved in that altercation with Otto. And the fans that remain at Chicago Stadium are littering the ice. Now Savard is grabbed from behind, and Chevrier gets in it again. Mike Vernon staying in his goal, even though there's one extra guy. And all this going on after the Flames cinched it with Mullen scoring to make it 5-2. Poplinski and Manson are going at it now. Dirk Graham's getting into it. And this is kind of a pointless scene after a hard-played game. Both teams should probably save their energy. The referee has signaled the benches about five times to stay there. Vernon won't come out of his crease, and Chevrier got involved, but on a fairly minor basis. Well, Hunter has his man pinned to the ice. I think that is Dirk Graham. There's Savard and Otto. Denny Savard's usually a smart player, but fooling with Joel Otto may not be a wise decision. But Poplinski is not going to let Manson up. He has him <laughs> down in the ice, and linesman Gerard Goche is there. And Poplinski is holding him down. Now McCrimmon, he's going after Steve Larmer. And of course the players are being pelted with all the half-filled beers. There's McCurry, he's got his clipboard out here. He's gonna get some quotes from the players that we'll be able to read about tomorrow. He's telling them all to get out of there. Somebody has been cut because there's a lot of blood over in the face-off circle. That's where Poplinski has Manson down in the ice. Now Hunter is taking Dirk Graham in against the boards. Now, I'm not sure who's been cut over there, whether it's uh, Poplinski or Manson. But there is a fair bit of blood on the ice. It could be uh, the linesman. Goche, he has blood on his hand, and there appears to be blood in the face of Manson. Now, Goche signaled for some help from referee Ron Finn to uh, break this one up. And again, the spectators continue to litter the ice with debris. And the police, the police here dress in orange jackets. They're all over by the Calgary bench, making sure no fans get involved there. And this debacle is going on, and the, some of these off-duty policemen are right out on the ice. Now Manson gets his hand loose and takes a swing at Poplinski. Poplinski had him pinned for about a 20 count. And Savard has got Joel Otto. 
Otto's apt to pick Samard up and get it, throw him right over the glass. I think it's over. Let's hope so. This is fairly pointless after the game, if not at any time. Well, apparently most of that blood was coming from the mouth of Dave Manson. The linesman managed to separate Manson and Poplinski, and then as Manson got up, he threw a right hand at Poplinski down in the ice. I don't really think he did much damage with that punch. But finally, the uh, players have been separated, and the remaining fans continue to uh, shower the ice with debris. McKinnis is trying to act pretty much as a peacemaker out there, as he and Yanni weren't really doing much. But as you said, Harry, this totally pointless in this hard-fought game. This all occurring after the siren had sounded to end the game. And a 5-3 Calgary victory over the Chicago Blackhawks and a 2-1 lead in game. Goal Mike Vernon stayed down at his end. Goaltender Alan Chevrier did get involved. He twice came to the assistance of Denny Savard, who was uh, involved in an altercation with Joe Lotto. Both coaches did a good job at controlling their players on the bench so no one came off to cause any trouble at all. They should be commended for that because I'm sure there were some itchy feet on both benches as they watched this whole thing go on. Bill McCreary hardly thought that it would be this kind of a night for him when he arrived at Chicago Stadium. He was the backup official, and he was pressed into service with 51 seconds remaining in the first period. Bob Murray better be careful. He's trying to get at Gerard Goche. Finn and McCreary are trying to dissuade him, and now Darren Pang, who's been an... I don't think I've ever seen Bob Murray this mad. But you can't be touching those officials, and his teammates better get him out of there. Darren Pang trying to keep Murray away from the officials. Here comes Keenan. Curry's asking him to get his players off the ice. And it finally appears as though all of them will leave the ice. Terry Crisp. The last to uh, head off the bench, Mike Keenan, has already headed to the stairway leading to his dressing room, and Terry Crisp will now make the walk to the stairway leading to the Calgary.